Today, I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide to help you get started working out at home as a complete beginner. Even if you're not a beginner and you just need some guidance to get back on track, get back into a healthy lifestyle, I can assure you that this video is exactly what you're looking for. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In all honesty, I never used to enjoy working out at home. I always felt more motivated going to the gym and lifting weights. To cut a long story short, I was suffering from some pretty serious back injuries and I knew that lifting heavy weights was just making this worse and on top of that I moved cities and to be honest I just lost all interest in going to the gym. Every time I went it was overcrowded and I just felt like I was wasting my time. So that's when I started doing some home workouts. All I'm going to say is I wish I had done this so much sooner. I feel the best I've ever felt. I love the way home workouts have shaped my physique. I couldn't achieve this in the gym and I have cut my workout time in half or even less. So today I'm giving you a step-by-step -step plan to get you started working out at home. Whether it's with your own body weight or a few light weights, if that's up to you, you're going to love this. All right, step number one is to establish why. Now this doesn't need to take long, but just sit with it for a moment and really dig deep and try and figure out why it is that you actually want to start working out. Go beyond that surface level reason like trying to lose weight for a vacation or trying to fit into a certain dress. In my experience the best results come from finding a reason that is long term such as you want to feel fit and have more energy for your children or maybe your grandchildren or because you want to feel stronger and more mobile because you realize that exercise is such an important part of your overall health. So figuring out a deep reason why is the first step you need to establish. Starting without this will only lead to it fizzling out and losing interest. Okay, number two is to set your goal or goals. As a beginner, the main focus really is to just get into working out and get the ball rolling. However, it's always helpful when we have something to work towards where we can actually see and feel the results. Some examples could be that you want to shape your arms, build stronger shoulders, build a strong core, build strength just using your own body weight, get more flexible and mobile. they are just some examples. You will know what your goals are, so just sit with that as well and figure out what it is that you want to achieve from working out. Once you've got that figured out, then you can look into a workout schedule that aligns with those goals. As a beginner, your goals really don't need to be super specific. If getting fitter and stronger is what you want to achieve, then make that your goal. Okay, step number three is to find a trainer that you resonate with. Now, to be honest, you really don't need to look any further than YouTube for this. And you certainly don't need to be paying for a workout program, especially as a beginner. The main goal here is to get you started and just to find your groove. There are many highly skilled trainers here on YouTube who each have their own unique way of presenting their content for their audience. So I want you to set aside some time and browse through YouTube and make a list of some trainers that stand out to you. Ideally, you want to find someone who post frequently and has a channel dedicated to home workouts so you don't just find one workout that they've got and then you realize they don't post anything else on that subject. Now you might find that you're interested in trying a few different types of workouts such as Pilates, HIIT, dumbbell workouts, wall Pilates. There's a whole range out there that you can try and there's a lot of stuff out there for beginners specifically. So write down the type of workouts you like, find trainers that resonate with you and this brings us to step four which is setting a workout schedule. Now that you have your trainers you need to set yourself a weekly workout schedule. I don't think it's necessary to schedule it any more than a week out. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and overload yourself with workouts at this early stage. Take it week by week, it's the best approach in my opinion. Figure out how many days per week you want to work out. I definitely don't advise any more than five and I don't think you should do any less than three. Under three just leaves too much space for you to slip back into old habits and lose interest in it. So I recommend three to five days per week. Remember if you start with three you can always increase it and vice versa if you start with five you can always decrease it. Now you want to set a workout schedule for each of those days and this here is where people get confused. Let's say you want to tighten and tone your arms. You don't need to make every workout an arm focused workout okay. One to two days per week of solely upper body is is enough. Then I think it's good to incorporate other types of workouts with this. Here is an example of a balanced four day workout split. Day one, upper body with dumbbells. Day two, walking cardio workout. Day three, arm workout with no equipment. Day four, wall pilates for beginners. So to actually create your schedule, I find the best way to stay on track and make it super easy and motivating is to create a weekly playlist on YouTube. All you need to do is find the workouts that you like from whichever trainers it is and add those workouts to a new playlist that you going to create, label it weekly workout and maybe the date that you're starting it and it's done. 
I do this myself every Sunday night so that when Monday rolls around, I know exactly what I'm doing and I can just get straight into it. Step number five is to keep it short. By this, I mean you don't need to do super long workouts to make progress and get amazing results. If longer workouts appeal to you more, then by all means do that. But for most beginners, I think that keeping it short is going to be better for your body, easing into the workouts, and you will also be more likely to stick to it. For many people, starting a fitness journey can be really daunting and you might not even like the idea of it to start with. Keeping your workouts shorter, just taking small steps, is going to be the best approach for most people. This doesn't just apply to beginners. Most of the workouts that I personally do, 90% of them, are under 30 minutes. In fact, just about every workout that I do is under 30 minutes. I find 20 minutes is a really good workout length, even shorter, absolutely fine. You can still get in a really intense, effective workout in 10 to 15 minutes. So don't be misled into thinking short workouts are not going to be as effective as longer ones. That is just not the case. It's how well the workout is put together, what it's designed to target and do, that is most important. And also how much effort you're putting into it yourself, okay? You have to take some accountability here. You have to put in the work and really either listen to your trainer or watch their technique and try really hard to get as much out of that workout as possible, okay? number six is to prepare. You want to prepare ahead of time. This could mean laying out your clothes and shoes the night before. I personally do this and find it really helpful. Also decide what time of day you're going to work out and try really hard to stick to this. If it means having to get up a little bit earlier or squeezing it in before you go to bed, sometimes we just have to make these adjustments. Depending on the type of workouts you want to do, you might need to purchase a few small items of equipment as well. For everyone, I think investing in a workout mat is a good start and you can get these really cheap can be really uncomfortable working out on a hardwood floor or carpet. So I do advise you to get a workout mat. Some other items you might need are a set of dumbbells, some good workout shoes, a decent supportive sports bra, a resistance band, totally up to you, but you don't need any equipment to get started working out at home. Okay guys, number seven and the last step is consistency. So I've given you everything you need to get started. The next thing you need to focus on is staying consistent. What I like to tell people is to think of it as a long-term lifestyle shift and not think of it as a short-term challenge or a chore. In saying this, it's okay if you skip a day. Don't beat yourself up about this. But you also want to keep yourself accountable. Some people like to work out with other people. This is a really great way to keep yourself accountable. Other people, like myself, enjoy working out alone. So I'm relying solely on myself to get myself up and get myself moving each day to actually get my workout and my exercise in. If you're someone who enjoys working out alone, you can find encouragement by engaging in the workout videos that you're doing on YouTube in the comment section. I personally love it when I see people commenting and updating each other on their progress and just supporting each other. This can make it so much more fun and you can build connections with people all around the world. You'll start to feel like part of a community and this is what I love to see happening here on my channel. People connecting, encouraging, getting results and building confidence in themselves. So guys, there is a step-by-step -step guide to get started as a beginner or get back on track working out at home. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.